Welcome back everybody. It's the third in the series of Back to Basics videos. If you haven't met me before, my name is Sharon Dower. I'm a floristry lecturer and I'm a lover of all things floral. Absolutely adore flowers and foliages and I put together a series of very, very Back to Basics floral design. So if you're new to floristry or flower arranging, this series of videos is ideal for you because it really goes back to the start, uses a basic selection of flowers, so you can easily learn the basic rules for flower arranging. Now, in the first video, we did a line arrangement. Then we progressed onto an asymmetrical video, um, sorry, an asymmetrical arrangement, which is almost like an L shape. It's an unbalanced triangle. And then um, today we're looking at a symmetrical arrangement so that's an arrangement that's balanced on both sides, has the same length and the same visual appearance on both sides. And we're going to start uh, with this little, almost a terracotta base, quite rustic and quite autumnal in its appearance. And um, I've inserted half a block of fresh floral foam into there that's already been pre-soaked. And just to make that corner edge, a little more manageable to arrange into, I'm going to take off a little bit of the edge around the outside. That gives us a much nicer angle to arrange into rather than that very severe square right angled corner. A little bit more pleasing to arrange with. Now I have got this time orange carnations. Now I know you're possibly looking at the video and thinking Oof, she's got carnations again. But the reason is, is that it gives you a really good progression from video number one where we did the line to two to three and so on and so on. Um, it helps when you're beginning to understand how the arrangement links from one week to the next. So if you're a bit fed up of seeing carnations, don't worry. There'll be a series of videos also coming um, halfway through the week at some point, which is going to show you designs in their more elaborate form. Uh, but for today, we're just using plain traditional carnations. Now, the basic rules, if you've watched any of the videos before, is that you, you to gauge your height, decide how tall your arrangement is going to be, you go twice the height of your container. Or in this case, because it's wider than it is tall, we're going to use the width to decide how tall our arrangement is going to be. And these are only guidelines and they're minimal guidelines. Um, so if I use this little carnation here, just to give you an idea of what double the height would be, that is the sort of rough height that our overall design is going to be. We have quite a big flower head on the carnation and we have quite a few of them. So that tells me that to avoid them all looking very squashed and close together and have not a lot of space in between them, it can allow me to go a little bit taller with my design. So that was roughly where the double height was. I'm going to be brave and go a little bit taller. My container is quite dominant. There's a lot going on in the pattern. So it won't look incorrect if I go a little bit taller. And that's my first placement in. And this is exactly the same rules as we followed on the first week when we did the line arrangement. My Carnation has gone in almost two thirds back on the foam. My flower head is directly over where I inserted it into the foam. I've got enough room at the back there to insert my foliage and I've got plenty of room at the front to bring in the rest of my flowers towards the front. Um, that gives us our height. And then I'm going to create the focal line during, down to the front just the same way as I did with um, the line arrangement the very first week. Now some of my carnations are already cut short because we've used them previously in another video. Um, but you can still see how the basic principles apply. Now my base flower 
and my profile flower is going to be one of the smaller heads. So just like this flower at the top is the smaller flower, coming down to a larger flower at the focal point. As I move away from the focal point, my flowers need to be smaller. So I'm going to look to see which of the flowers is a smaller head. And I think that one is probably the best one to choose. Now my front flower is going to come out here at the front so that we're forming almost a visual triangle from the top flower down to the bottom. If you can imagine um, we continued out the back here, we would have almost a triangular shape forming. So to create this profile shape, we need to have one flower at the front to give us a profile and depth. To the arrangement and we're going to continue down through the front just like we would have done when we created that focal line at the very beginning. Now my second flower is going to be slightly more open than the flower at the top and it, the beauty of these little carnations is that we can Use just our finger and thumb just to open them up if they're not quite the size that we want them to be. And my next flower, now we're looking to have that sort of line down to the front where the flowers move very rhythmically from left to right. I'll just turn that round for you to see. That's how we're looking to create that focal line and this staggered effect, this very rhythmic line will work its way right down to the bottom. Now my focal flower, the bigger of the heads, is roughly two thirds of the way down the design. So if I just pop that in, you can see what we're aiming to achieve. So this one is my focal flower. And then we're going to add in another flower just above it and another one just below it, so we've got that very attractive staggered line coming down to the front. Now this doesn't have to always be a carnation, and it doesn't have to always be the same flower and the same colour. It's just much, much easier when you're learning to work with one colour and one flower. Until you know a little bit more about colour theory and how colour combinations work together and how they affect your um, the way you look at them, it's, I find, much easier to learn to arrange flowers when you have just a simple selection of flowers to work with. Now if we take our eye from the top, we get slightly larger as we come down towards the focal point, which is here, roughly two thirds the way down from the top and then as you move away your flowers get smaller because um, it makes a much more pleasing impression for the eye to see and for the viewer to appreciate and look at. So that's your basic line, exactly the same as we did the first and the second week. And now we have to gauge our widths. Now triangles, if you remember back to school when you learnt geometric shapes, you can have triangles that are equally sided or you can have triangles that are taller than they are wide. And for me the triangle design, this very formal geometric shape, always looks nicer when the sides are narrower than the actual height. It's not right or wrong, it's just the, the way that I find the triangle looks nicer and is more pleasing to the eye. And to gauge how wide we want to go with our arrangement, we're going to roughly work out where half of the distance of the height is. So if I use one of my taller carnations, just do that upside down little trick again, measure roughly where you think half is going to be, So that is a rough estimate. Again, I say it each week, it doesn't have to be perfect and it doesn't have to be um, measured with a ruler. 
what we can then do is place two carnations together, cut them to the same length, and we're almost guaranteed that our two edges, our two sides, are going to be the same distance. That's possibly a little bit too long, so we'll trim them down a bit shorter. I'm going to use that little method just to open them up. And then these are going to be positioned on either side of the, uh, the centre line. So you can imagine your floral foam being split into half. These are either side of the centre line. If I just swing that round, you'll see then that from the top, if we have a, a, an imaginary line drawn down from the top to the side, we have a triangle shape forming. And if we look at it from the side, these two are slightly angled forward. And again, they are the smaller of the carnations. If you have a choice to create that visual movement and to make the centre part more heavy and more visible, more attractive to the eye. Now I'm going to use three on either side. So we've already placed one carnation in on each side. And then I'm going to add in another one towards the front and put them at slightly different lengths, slightly different angles. So we've got um, a different part of the flower seen by the eye. There we are. And then we're going to repeat that on the opposite side. The flower, the carnations don't have to be in exactly the same position on the left and the right. We just need to create a visual link from one side to the other. There we are. So let's just move these out of the way. So that's the very formal basic shape to start with. We have equal sides. We have our overall outline, we have a stronger focal point, and if we look at all the stems, they all radiate out from a centre point. So they look like they're all aiming to be placed into the same part of the foam, all heading for an imaginary centre spot. There we are. So focal line and your widths. And now we can fill in with some interesting foliages. Now you've seen the, the um, birch used quite a few times and because we are in autumn, I do like to use the birch because um, it's quite seasonal for this time of the year and it has a lovely link with the colour of the carnations. Nice autumnal shades. And I'm just going to use a few of the shorter little bits of the birch to come down and strengthen that focal line down through the middle. When you become a little bit more confident in your arranging, this could be another flower type. But for now we'll stick to just some foliage and some basic twigs there at the back. Good colour link with my face. Now this one is leather leaf. So far we haven't used this before, but this is um, a florist foliage. It's not one that you would be able to get to grow in the garden, but one that you would be able to source from your local shop. Then we have this one, which is pistache, another florist foliage. A little bit small. Now the difficulty with these two is the colour is very similar and the shape of the leaf is very similar. So together they give a very, very busy appearance to the design and very little contrast. So what I also have to go with those is this one. This is called um, Grisselinia. This is a garden foliage and it has a much more limey appearance to it. It's a more limey, zesty sort of colour green. And um, that is a much broader leaf shape there, so it gives another, again, another contrast between the foliage. And 
And just to strengthen my focal point, I often encourage you to have a flatter base flower to strengthen the focal area. And if um, the foliage that I've got isn't particularly tall, so I've also picked um, some Salal, another florist foliage, which is tall enough to give me um, some plant material at the back behind those carnations. So a lovely tall piece to start with. Um, I've allowed myself plenty of room here at the back to bring in some foliage behind my carnations. That will strengthen that original outline shape that we created. And I've got a few shorter pieces so that we bring that same colour down through the focal area. Brings your eye down through the front and out to that base carnation. Now at this stage, if you had only one choice of foliage, it doesn't matter if you aren't able to source foliage like I am, then just follow exactly the same principles. Create your outline shape, whether it's with the foliage or the flowers first. And until you become a little bit more confident in what you're using, just, just continue to use the same foliage type. So you'll see I have strengthened that focal line and I've strengthened the height of my floral arrangement. And then I'm going to use the leather leaf, so this foliage next. And this one is wonderful because it has um, nice pointed ends to it. So it's a, a great one to strengthen your outline and your width of a design. And a little tip, if you place two pieces on top of one another, the same height, just like we did with the carnation, or the same length, sorry, then you're guaranteed to have your widths the same on either side. So again, it's a symmetrical design. We're aiming to have both sides equal in length and visual appearance. And it's a front-facing design, so it's only seen from one side. There we are, you can see how that leather leaf defines the width of my design more clearly. And then, um, because we have it on the sides, ideally it's nice to bring it towards the centre. And um, that one's a little bit untidy, so we'll get rid of that one. Now one thing that's good about the leather leaf is that if you don't want to use it in a full piece, it's easily chopped into segments if you want to use it in shorter pieces. So we can add that in at the height as well to bring that same colour and texture through to the height. And then we can again cut it down short and bring it towards the front of the design. So that we've got something more attractive to look at there. And at the moment the design is very flat. We don't have any flower material brought towards the back. Um, and we need to bring flower material to the back for two reasons. It adds actual weight. So it stops the design from tipping forward. And it also helps to give the design depth. It makes your eye travel through towards the back. And it, of course, prevents the floral foam from drying out. Once all the foam is covered, there's less, uh, less risk of it dehydrating and losing all its moisture. So there we are. That's two types of foliage in so far. Now I'm going to try the Grisselinia next. I think I will probably not use the pistache because it's too similar in its colour and in its texture to the leather leaf and it would just be a waste, it would completely disappear in the design. So we'll go with the Grisselinia instead. Much broader leaf, different colour combination. So we get 
some interesting textures showing up in the arrangement. Now I have of course got the focal flowers, which I uh, sorry the focal leaves, which I will put in as well. And this will help to strengthen the outline. And with quite a traditional arrangement like this, if we have one colour on one side, it is often good to repeat it on the other side so that that symmetry is strengthened. So if I just turn that round there, you can see how that's coming together nicely. So the leather leaf is all throughout the design. It's on the side, it's on the middle, and it's um, brought towards the height a little bit. And then just to strengthen that little centre section there where, the, where my uh, focal flower is, we're going to use these, this garden foliage. So this is the guinea leaf leaves, also known as um, elephant ears. It's a good one to have in the garden, especially when you're learning flower arranging. It's a good focal flower and a good base flower. And it will help to give me a contrast in my textures. Okay, so we could do with a little bit of foliage out on this side. It's a little shorter on that side. And then I think we're pretty much done. So you will clearly see now there's a front facing design. It has equal length, um, sorry, equal width on both sides. It has a clear outline shape, this case being a triangle. And we have some interesting textures with the foliage mainly. We obviously are only using one flower type, so we don't get a great deal of, tech of contrast with the um, carnations themselves. Now we have of course used just carnations in this design, but you will clearly be able to see a link between last week's design and the design the week before. And as you progress and you get a little bit more confident, you'll be able to use more flowers and a range of flower types. But for now when you're learning, Stick to, stick to very basic flowers, ones that are easy to use and ones that are easy to get hold of. The carnation is nice and robust, it's very strong and very long lasting, so you can use it over and over again while you're practising. And hopefully by now you're becoming a little bit more confident arranging your flowers into the foam. Next week we'll move on to a different design again, it's going to be a round shape next week. So more of a posy style that would suit the centre of a table. But for now, have a practice. Enjoy. If you want to um, be notified every time we upload a new video, then subscribe to the channel. And if you would like to leave any comments or questions about what we've done today, please do. So I'll link below the flowers and the foliage that I've used today. And then if you want to make the design yourself, you have a guide and a reference to refer back to. And hopefully by now you're on to your third design and you've learned some new skills and new techniques. And we'll see you next week with design number four in the Back to Basics designs. Bye for now.